Good morning, YouTube. It's me, Thorin, Bradley. We are going to jump into this real quick. Not going to waste your guys' time, but today is a day in the life, and it's not a very exciting day. So it's a perfect day for a day in the life. All right. Sound good? Let's get it. Here we go. Here getting ready to do my little morning warm-up cardio session before legs. Um, today's kind of just going to be a day in the life. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of the struggles I've been going through. Um, nothing scary, just normal life stuff. We'll look at a couple of the foods that I eat um, earlier in the day and why I eat the way I eat now. Um, and then we're going to look at maybe some of the normal stuff I'm doing in my work day. We'll talk about that. Now at the end of the day, we're going to take each other through my evening cardio because yeah, that's what I'm doing. My long sessions of cardio now is in the evening. Not for a particular physique reason, it's for a mental reason, but it's a lot. It's been a lot lately to just um, keep my head afloat. I'm answering more emails and doing more computer time than I ever have in my life because of the growth that's happened on the internet and social media. It's been wonderful, but it's been a challenge. I don't have a team, I don't have a manager. I don't have an agent, you're looking at them. So <laughs> it's been cool to be able to show some of these brands how it's done and really put them in the dirt with, uh, put them you know, in the rear view when it's taking off and really, really forcing growth myself has been something I'm really proud of and something a lot of brands reach out to me for help with. <laughs> so it's dope because it's not even my background, you know? But anyway, long story short, I just mixed up some pre. This is C4 Dynasty. I'm not going to even tell you a code because honestly, you'll you'll reach out and ask for I'll put it in the description or something. Let's not cloud um, this beautiful video with too much sales tactics here. But if you want to screenshot that ingredients list real quick, let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. Maybe that's focused. But you can screenshot that ingredient list. Um, it's pretty insane very highly dosed pre-workout probably that most highly dosed pre-workout I've seen ever um, but anyway shake that up I'm gonna get this morning cardio started this leg day started legs on a Monday I know what what a hell of a um, what a hell of a chore that's gonna be and then we'll jump into it okay I'm sorry if I sound tired I literally am <laughs> All right guys, so sorry if I'm yelling, but um, it's leg day, just like I said, just like I promised. The workout is posted on my fitness app. Sorry, let's scoot this back so you can see me a little bit better. The workout is posted on my fitness app as today's Thor's workout of the day. Um, so today's leg day is the exact one that I'm doing. The cool thing is, is I actually have two great warm up movements today that I'll be doing to get ready for leg day. Of course, you guys know I just did the step mill, so you saw me working there, or the Stairmaster. And now it's time to do my two warm up movements for leg day. So let's check them out, get a look at them. They're actually pretty unique and I really like them. One is a warm up for the quads, the other is more on the glutes. This one is called Spanish squats. You're gonna put one, these bands are both connected to the squat rack here. You can see them connected to the squat rack. And I'm gonna put these bands behind my knees. I'm gonna step back until the bands feel like they have quite a bit of tension with my knees tracking to the outside, and we're gonna pump out three sets of 15 today. Down, squeeze at the top. Down, squeeze at the top. Man, I'm really loving this improved quality on the camera. It's awesome. So, we're doing now a monster walk. This is the second warm up movement before we start our leg day. Essentially, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna loop this pull up band around my feet. Standing just inside of it, that's all. Pull it up like a triangle shape, but cross the band and hold it up high. Now I'm going to push to the outside, small step back. Outside, small step back. Four, four, five, five. So the main reason I like that lateral band walk motion with the monster walks 
is because the tension is down low. It's all the way down here at your foot, at, your, at the outside of your foot, which is causing you to have a disadvantage, in a good way, a disadvantage to the movement versus those lateral band like booty pump walks that people do. You're actually going to then involve this musculature here throughout the knee, which is gonna help your IT band tightness. If you're a runner, um, it's gonna help with that lateral strength in the knee for anyone that might deal with knee valgus when they squat or that concave motion that happens at the bottom of people's squat. It can help you strengthen that. So it's an amazing movement on a day when you're about to squat. I really like it a lot. Enjoy it. I gotta get this leg day going because I am, as always, so limited on time. We have, let's see, I have seven egg whites probably closer to six real egg whites, they're pretty small eggs. And I have one egg yellow in there too, or one whole egg in there too. Um, so we're gonna, after I get this you know, omelet all cooked up, well first let me tell you, I actually do use an organic olive oil spray so it doesn't have any of the accelerants, in, what do they call them? Is it accelerants? Maybe that's what they call them, um, but whatever. It's an organic olive oil spray, and that's to minimize how much fat I use in my pan when I cook things. It's a very common practice for me, and it helps my macros a bunch, because then I get to eat my fat. Um, but that's kind of something we've already talked about, so that's just for the newbies here. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this breakfast, and while I'm eating, I'm gonna explain my eating habits lately. I hope you guys get, I mean, it's not a day in the life of eating, or a full day of eating, this is a day in the life, so we're just gonna talk about food a little bit today, but we'll talk about some important details that have changed the way I've been sort of structuring my eating days, all right? And what's that weird shit in the corner? That stuff is sauerkraut. I know, not exactly the most appetizing thing in the world. I'm not gonna be eating them together, or blending it or anything, I just gotta get it in. So. A lot of people ask me, how do I help with bloating? How do I help with digestive help? Um, how do I help with just your gut or your just overall breakdown of foods? If you're eating a lot of protein, as a female or a woman, it might be new for you to be eating over 120, 130 grams of protein a day, especially if you just started tracking your macros with me through my app. So if you're one of those people who wants to take probiotics or find some super expensive you know, supplement that's going to help with your digestion, you're wasting your money. All you need is either kimchi, kimchi is um, Korean, but it's uh, fermented as well, kimchi or sauerkraut. Now, I usually buy kimchi because I'm a guy who loves spicy stuff, but I found this sauerkraut, I am not sponsored, I don't even know who this is, their, their branding is obviously awesome, and it does the same thing. You're looking at the same live active cultures, and, it helps, it really does help with your digestion and your breakdown. Now you notice something's missing, I only eat about two ounces by the way a day of the sauerkraut, it lasts a while. I think that puts me at, this will last me eight days and it was not that expensive, it was like five, six bucks. So yeah, that's way cheaper than a supplement would be and it's food, so it's even better for you. Now, it might have even been cheaper than that, I don't know, you'll have to figure out through your, through your store. but. My breakfast lately have been very light. I eat, just like we just, I just showed you, it's almost all protein. Very light protein too and almost no fat. Um, that's how I like it. I like to get my body some time to really break down, break down and digest the food from the night before but also sort of go into my workouts feeling a little bit lighter on my stomach. I always train better that way and it's just how I feel good. This is not a form of intermittent fasting or anything like that. I just like eating 80, 75% of my calories after 5 p.m. It's not intermittent fasting because I'm not fasting, but I just like to keep my meals light, make sure I'm staying in protein synthesis during my workouts, so I'm eating egg whites after I lift, and then later in the day um, when I do my cardio, after my work day, I do my cardio to kind of wind back out. Um, and when I do that, I'll throw down maybe a light protein shake with a banana or something and then I'll eat the majority of my food after that. Now there are days that come by where I'm just ravenous, super hungry. Maybe I will add two pieces of sourdough toast with this breakfast. Maybe I'll add um, a chicken and rice meal in the middle of the day or something. But for the most part, I actually really do just eat an egg white omelet, um, maybe a piece of fruit, the fermented item, wherever it's kimchi or it could be um, 
It could be the sauerkraut. Then I'll have my shake and my banana midday, and then I'll eat most of my calories in the evening. So those are usually in the form of potatoes, lean meats like elk, chicken, stuff like that, or a fish. And then, you know, wrap it up with a nice dessert of some kind. Not dessert, you know, obviously something pretty healthy, but that's how I eat. And that's, that's how I've been liking uh, my structure of my day lately. It makes me feel sharper. It also makes me feel like I'm not fasting to the point of breaking down muscle tissue or feeling like just garbage all the time. I can eat if I want to eat, but I keep it light. So I hope you guys um, kind of get more of an insight to how I structure my day with my eating right now. We will do, I promise, we'll do a full day of eating in the future, maybe even a cheat day with Thorin, but with me, shouldn't talk about myself as a third person, but, <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into work now. I have to do, welcome to my life, I've gotta do a lot of more educated stuff uh, with answering emails and helping people out with computer work. Then I've gotta change clothes and take a quick rinse in the shower, change clothes, put on my work work clothes, like blue collar clothes, and get out and get some shit done today too. So it's, it's, a, it's a hassle, it's a hustle to say the least. So I'm gonna eat. I don't want you guys watching me eat, that is strange. Uh, there's no need for that. And then we'll jump into the next thing, all right? Refocus, hold on. Sorry guys, quick update. The sauerkraut, go back, screenshot it, try to find it at the store. It's fucking good. <laughs> Better than pickles. I'm serious, it's really good stuff. So yeah, not sponsored. I have no affiliation with the brand. They don't even know who I am. Um, but absolutely, I will vouch for the fact that that is even easier to eat than kimchi. So not only do you get good probiotics in your routine, but you get to enjoy a nice little snack. And it's got like two grams of carbs in it. I really don't even care if you track those carbs because you're taking it as a supplement basically. Uh, two ounces is not going to kill you, so enjoy. Go find some. Alright guys, I am two hours in of answering macros and questions on my emails. Uh, for those who don't know, I run a fitness app. It is called Oak. I'll put the link down in, below in the description. Again, this is not a sales pitch, it's just to let you know the app is growing uh, tremendously and I have now switched to answering emails twice a day. Morning, afternoon, morning and night actually. And this is what it looks like to be doing all of this stuff by yourself. Um, now I do have help when it comes to the tech side, so if there's a crash on the app, I do have a support team for that but they are just worked into the actual infrastructure of it. I do not have actual employees myself, so it comes down to me answering emails, getting people their custom macros by hand myself, and still having that personal touch with all of it. So today I didn't want to work at my desk. I had to take a break, move on over here to the couch. It just looked more inviting, and at least get to you know get a little bit of this. Let's see if we can see a little bit of that if it focuses. Get a little bit of that greenery outside um yeah it just helps kind of muscle through this stuff you know i'm not a computer person i am not a tech person per se but i'm having to you know address that learning curve by spending more time on the computer um more time on the phone boring stuff to talk about i know but just so you know if you are a member of the oak app and community even though it has grown this big it is still me it is still me answering your emails so enjoy that oh enjoy that person that's my boy it's my best friend Bobby um, yeah enjoy that personal touch that you still get because it, even though I've grown as big as I have and the app is growing immensely it's me for hours on end slaving away at getting answers to your questions so let's kill it I'm gonna finish up here in about 20 minutes and then it's time to go do some stuff outside <laughs> know it is officially the end of spring or the rainy and snow season because I have a series of these cool hammocks around my property for when I have friends over or people over sorry there's some bugs in here and when I have friends over friends family over people over um, I like having these series of hammocks just hanging around so people can I get these string lights going and people can just kind of kick back and relax with the beer. They all have cup holders in them. 
Um, so my property is quite relaxing, to say the least. And I will say that after the fact that these straps, so these are like really nice um, sort of outdoorsy camping hammocks that are real good for climbing or climbers and campers and stuff like that. But I will say with the fact that I'm a heavier guy, I'm like 200 pounds, I get in slow. You gotta, you gotta not put all your trust in it, you know what I mean? But other than that, this is a cool way to kick back for sure. So I'm excited to get these all busted out again for the season. 30 minutes, end of the day. This is how I get some of that built up stress sort of out of my system so that when I go back inside to eat dinner, I've got all that kind of melted off me, it feels like. So yeah, I'm doing 30 minutes right now. No fucking cheating, guys. If you're using a step mill, stair master, incline treadmill, hands off. Forearm training. So I'm actually gonna give you my favorite forearm training exercise. I've been really sticking to this one for the last like two or three months. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to set up, but it requires some attention. So pay close attention to how I do this. We have a thick band, very thick band. We're going to set it over the barbell that is on a rack. This is not a Smith machine. It needs to be a barbell so that it rotates. Next, we are going to fold over one more loop just so that it can't move. Now it's going to allow it to roll up. You notice that? Now what you can't see is at the bottom, I'm going to have this band cinched down onto a weight. All you need to do is loop it through, pull that weight up, and again, watch closely, looped over, and then one time, you're gonna have to really smooth that over like that. Now it's in the middle, grab the barbell as such, and roll. And as I roll, the tension is going to slowly lift this kettlebell off the ground. This is a 45 pounder, pretty challenging. Um, for most people, a 45 is probably even too much, but you are going to forward roll all the way up, let it down quickly, but smooth. Don't let it bounce, let it rest, and then I'm going to go up again. And I'm going to do five sets of three total roll-ups, and then my forearms are going to be completely fucking toast. Here I am working through it, and there you go. That's whew, one of my favorite ways to train forearms, and it can actually be quite therapeutic for people who do a lot of hand movement, you know, typing, etc. So I'm gonna finish this, let me get my actual real sets in, not my YouTube sets. And then we're gonna go talk and finish up this video for the evening, all right? So that was it, a day in the life. Um, I showed you most of what was going on today. Obviously there's little odds and ends here and there that I had to just get down and dirty with and put the camera aside. But um, you know, these YouTube videos are getting more exciting and more fun to make as we go along because I'm able to share with you guys a little bit of both worlds both the exercise and nutrition and fitness modeling side of me and then the blue collar side of me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really juggling the dichotomy between those two things along this journey. So I'm learning, um, but you know, I'm not gonna lose either part of me along the way and that's sort of why I've done things the way I've done them. That's why I choose to live this rurally. But I do have one last um, topic I wanted to cover. I'm getting fatigued uh, emotionally and mentally with diet culture and I had a lot of patience for it in the beginning and now I'm losing that patience uh, quite abruptly. And I think a small part of it is TikTok uh, and Instagram and these worlds really sort of sensationalizing and also rewarding very intellectually sound people for saying very obtuse and inaccurate things because they're being rewarded with views, they're being rewarded with controversy, they're being rewarded with comments and pushback. And it's really changing the culture of this industry and pulling balance out of the picture and rewarding some of these, these idiots who are very intelligent humans, PhDs even, 
if you will, and it's rewarding them for saying things that even they know really is off, um, off kilt and should not be rewarded. So let me be very clear. When I went to school, I got my master's degree. I specialized in cell signaling cascades uh, and exercise physiology is what I spent all my time reading and studying and inundating my life with. It was extremely and is extremely rewarding to know that along the way you start to find that the real answers for nutrition and health and physiology always lie within the world of balance, what you can maintain for a long time and also what is at least a little bit enjoyable. So let me be quite plain. Intermittent fasting, keto, carnivore, these three diet uh, hacks and techniques that are right now being rewarded for people telling you it's the end all be all, they are all unnecessary to be quite plain and they are all oversold, over exaggerated um, and you do not have to follow anything like that to get great results. In fact, you're better off not following something like that. Unless you struggle with epilepsy, you do not need to be following any of these diet trends or you know, sensationalist approaches. Think about it for a second and I wish this would go viral because um, it truly is the answer. Think with me, imagine that you are from a different planet and you have not been inundated with all these culturally weird norms of thinking that a diet is going to solve your problems and just listen to the words that I tell you real quick. Quote it, a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, lean meats, and some fish and seafood is very well balanced and as long as you know your quantities will lead you down a road of a maintainable lifestyle, sustainability, you'll enjoy your life, you will live very long, and you will have a lean, awesome physique. Think about how common sense that statement I just said is. We don't need these fucking PhDs walking around grocery stores with their shirts off, standing in front of a chip aisle, screaming and ranting away about how chips are going to end you. Sure, you should not be eating processed foods, you should be avoiding you know, as much sugar as you can, but generalistically speaking, it's not going to hurt you to keep things within balance and just stick to something for a longitudinal period of time. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, lean meats, and some seafoods is all you need to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Just figure out what your quantity should be, and that's it. Intermittent fasting has not been proven in any meta-analysis studies to outperform that diet that I just told you right there, and guess which one out of the two? is a more sustainable approach for most humans. So again, unless you have epilepsy, you don't need to be doing keto. In fact, I'd prefer you didn't. I'd prefer you built a better fat burning body on a kindling pile of carbohydrates. That's for a different day. We'll talk about that some other time. Please don't eat only plant, I mean only animal meats and organ meats only because you're going to put yourself at risk for very likely some colon cancer issues, and maybe even some cholesterol problems down the road, especially for people at high risk. And lastly, intermittent fasting will only work for you if it fits and works for your lifestyle. Why? Because it'll lead to a situation where you're not overeating. Can't you find that balance without doing intermittent fasting? Of course you can. So again, it is another one of these things that works indirectly because it's indirectly getting you to the same destination that eating a balanced diet will get you to. It's not sexy, it's not fun. I don't have some flashy statement to make that's gonna make it sensationalist, but guess what, that's the fucking truth. So until we get one of those types of statements to go viral, we're gonna to continue to see people in our society struggle with understanding all of this crazy inundating knowledge that's coming in that is really way beyond what anyone needs to be thinking. Think about how common sense that statement I just made was. Really take it home with you, and you'll have all of this figured out much quicker. You guys have an amazing evening. I'm sorry to tell you, a lot of these uh, super highly educated people are standing on a foundation of really good education that they twisted because they're only being rewarded for saying fucking sensationalist things. So let them do that on their own, and know deep down in your heart, moving on with a sense of balance is going to be the reason why you succeed. It's not going to be jumping on and off all these weird fads. That's all I got for you guys today. Let's hope that the, you know, the likes, the follows, the views, the subscriptions reward pe more people like me for preaching um, a lifestyle that someone actually wants to fucking live.